Hello everybody, uh, here I am again, another MCU review. We are really plowing through these. We are officially out of Phase 2 and into Phase 3. Probably my favourite phase to be honest, like, this, you know, season, uh, Phase 1 was fine, you know, they had some ups and downs and Phase 2 had some, you know, didn't start off the best, but then it really hit the high mark towards the end, and then and it went a little, yeah, with Age of Ultron. But uh, Phase 3 has just been banging and banging and banging and banging and banging. Uh, and here we are with the first film of Phase 3, and maybe, just maybe, my favourite film in the entire MCU. Captain America Civil War. This film I loved when it came out and I still love it today. This was the second Russo Brothers film and considering how well they juggled all the characters they had to juggle in Winter Soldier I shouldn't have been worried about them juggling it here. I honestly think this is the best juggling act in terms of many multiple characters in one film that any MCU film has ever done. I think this is a bigger achievement in terms of being able to handle that much going on than Infinity War to be honest because Infinity War yes you had all the characters but that whole story was just everything was centered around Thanos. So if you get Thanos right, then nothing else matters really because these characters have all been set up, you know. Now, the only characters who would have had any sort of connection with Thanos would be Gamora and the Guardians and that was alright. But this, it's it is literally insane how well they were able to manage everything because look at this on paper. You, this film had to present an issue between two, the two biggest characters, Cap and Iron Man and have a conflict there, you needed to balance out that issue to see both sides of the debate so you know you can you can relate to both so you can actually choose a side uh, you can they also had to deliver a good movie with almost every MCU character bar Nick Fury, Thor and Hulk you then had to introduce Black Panther and Spider-Man, two characters who ha were going to have solo films, but this was their first introduction to the MCU, two characters that have already gone on to great success and would be extremely influential within the rest of the universe. So, like, the fact that they were able to do everything perfectly in this film is just a testament to how good a directing duo the Russo brothers are because in this film despite the fact that I am team cap and I've been team cap since Winter Soldier diehard team cap there were moments in this film where I genuinely was on the side of Iron Man and saw his side of the debate on whether these superheroes should be working for the government whether there should be some you know moderator or whether they should have free range but yeah so like the fact that you flip flop both sides in, during the course of this movie is a testament to how well they managed to bring about this issue in a way that you can see both sides that is a credit to the story and the fact that no one here feels like they're really there for no reason I know some people complain like why is Hawkeye here why is Ant-Man here Ant-Man's there to sort of introduce him to the wider MCU, so you know, when he comes around in Endgame, as we've seen in the trailers, people know who he is. Uh, and Hawkeye is there because of the connection they had set up in Age of Ultron between him and Wanda, and ha Wanda's whole deal in this movie. You know, and I did quite love, I love the uh, Wanda-Vision relationship, both in the comics and the movies, I think it's done quite well in the movies. Yeah, you know, so that was all done really well, and low key, I live for Vision spending half this movie dressed up like a fucking English teacher in a lovely L sweater, Gansey. Uh, 
the villain here I think is underrated. You know, another underrated MCU villain. I think because of you know the fact that there are two sides, you know, two conflicting groups between within the Avengers in this film, I think he gets the villain Zemo gets overlooked. But he's quite good here. Like, you know, he's not like I would definitely put him in the top ten. Like he you know, he does actually fulfill his goal. He tears the Avengers apart in this movie. So that so I do have to credit them for that, like a good villain here. And what else? What else? What else? What else? I'm checking my notes. I'm checking my notes. You know. Uh, you know, I do love. I again, I love the Jason Bourne vibe here. I love how they handle Bucky here. You know, Black Panther. Black Panther is a badass in this movie. You know, like this is literally perfect introduction for him. You know, like you watch this film and you're like, yeah, I want to see a Black Panther standalone movie here. Because of how they do him and his, he has his own full character arc in this movie. You know, this whole revenge against Bucky, that is, you know, that is resolved. So I was like, you've already seen him go through a character change before his own movie. Like, that is how well they managed to fit everything in here, that you can even do that. You know, and then obviously you had the introduction of Spider-Man. You know, whether that was originally planned or not because of the deal with Sony, it doesn't matter. The fact is, Spider-Man was done perfectly here. I love the scene with him and Tony in Peter's room where he's like giving his reasons for being Spider-Man. It's like, that explanation, is, it's perfect, you know, yes, that is Spider-Man right there, that whole, you know, he doesn't say a great pair of comes great responsibility, but he's able to, you know, speak in a way that like, you know, reminds you of it without blatantly being it. Uh... And obviously Tom Holland's great, and you know we'll talk about Homecoming when we get to Homecoming. But you know he is he's he's really good in the role, and the airport scene is just incredible. Like I love this movie just for that alone, even without the fact that the movie overall was great. So yes, I I love Civil War, and. Yeah, so Civil War, definitely my favourite MCU film. I, I can't find a fault with this, to be honest. Like there, probably, there, are, there probably is a fault with this movie, but I can't see it. So I am going to give it 10 out of 10. I will see you guys next time when we are about to talk about Black Panther.